my name is Joshua Wong from Hong Kong. I'm honored to be invited by Q Berlin to share my experience on youth activism and my experience in Hong Kong's umbrella movement four years ago. Ivan from Dambusisto will be the one representing me to share our idea on fighting for Hong Kong democracy. While both of us went to prison last year, I'm the only one still facing another legal challenge by the government in connection with the Umbrella Movement protests. I'm currently released on bail, pending an appeal schedule for next April. In the time being, I lost my freedom of travel overseas, which is my reason that I can't join you all in Berlin to join this meaningful conference. As the one who involved in street activism five or six years ago, we realized the sense of belongings of being a citizen in Hong Kong. As the one who realized that the promise of Beijing towards Hong Kong, the one country two system just op operating under threat, we just urge for more people to aware on how Hong Kong people keep their fight and against Beijing and Chinese government interference. No matter from 2012, the anti-national education movement to against the patriotic propaganda and brainwashing school curriculum, to 2014, how we organized the civil disobedience to organize demonstration and let the world to know that how common people ask for free election. Until nowadays, even we face prosecution or disqualification, we still are aware of the uniqueness of Hong Kong and ready to keep on this fight. I would say that even I can't join all you guys in Berlin, I would really hope the sharing from iPhone can inspire all of you guys to realize the story and the journey of Hong Kong people to fight against the authoritarian regime. I urge the international community not to forget about Hong Kong. In the past two years alone, democratically elected legislators, including Nathan Law from Demosisto, have been removed from office. Others, including Agnes Chow, also from Demosisto, the activist group refrained after the Umbrella Movement, also are barred from appearing on the ballot because of their political position Beijing deems unacceptable. Political prosecution against protesters has become the new norm. I'm just the one who served jail sentence for around four to six months. And Edward Lerm, one of the local camp leaders, serving a six years prison term at this very moment. I would say that historically, Hong Kong has been an important place between China and the world, especially the European country. Our freedoms, stability, and the rule of law have been the reasons for our success. But now, Hong Kong is standing on the front line against Chinese imperialism in the 21th century, from undermining liberal institutions such as press freedom to meddling in free election. There's no doubt that Beijing is actively developing its sharp power. China's goal is to create a new international order governed not by shared values of human rights, but by its force of power that violate on universal value. We see this in Xinjiang, we see this in Tibet, we see this in Macau, we see this in Taiwan. We see this in the South China Sea, even Australia or European country face the Bell and Road policy is constantly under threat, which makes it all the more important to study Beijing's action in Hong Kong. As a Hong Kongers, locally born, live and love the places. I would say that Hong Kong may be a small place, but it's unique because of its people. The iconic image of skyscrapers in this bustling metropolis are world famous, especially for the Victoria Harbour. But it's the Hong Kongers fighting on the street who truly make it great. The only path towards democracy in Hong Kong is self-determination, which means Hong Kongers hope to determine the economic and political status by themselves instead of determined by the Chinese Communist Party. We believe it's a fundamental right mentioned and recorded in the United Nations Human Rights Charter, and we believe that all people in the world entitle it. Thank you. Please keep your eyes in Hong Kong. It's a place where people try to make a different journey, 
let the world to know that we are not the one who need to fully obey and loyal to the uprising China model. Last year, I was sentenced to 13 months in prison for being in a protest in 2014, which was part, uh, a part of the purge against young activists in 2017 by the Chinese and Hong Kong government. Um, I'm currently the chairperson of Demosisto, a Hong Kong youth activist group, which strives to use uh, direct actions, uh, creative media, and citizen connection to pursue a democratic, free, and fair life in the city. The hosting organization have originally invited uh, Joshua, but he have to face a trial uh, in the court, so uh, he cannot come and join us. Uh, around eight years ago, I first met Joshua uh, and several like-minded friends. Uh, we were still a bunch of secondary school students at the time. Back then, the government tried to push for a compulsive nationalist education curriculum which would minimalize textbook content not favorable to the current administration. And they asked students to cry tears of patriotism when seeing the national flag. Um, awareness of current affairs was not popular among young people at the time, and systematically expressing political opinions was a rare occurrence. Although we did not have any political experience, we were young and made good use of the social networking, quickly recruiting a group of young people who had similar concerns. Our group of secondary school students started to speak to parents, teachers, and other adults about our ideals, challenging their views of social duties and affairs, ultimately winning their concerns, attention, and support. So a small-scale movement then became the talk of the town, more and more people got involved. Our hunger strike provoked the citizens' anger towards the government, and eventually the administration was forced to revoke the nationalist curriculum. Since then, we gathered other young people who wanted to change society and promote the genuine universal suffrage in Hong Kong through street actions. Um, we went through the umbrella movement in 2014, like some of you remember, which lasted for 79 days. We occupied the main streets of the business district to ask for universal suffrage and went through a long process of fight, figuring out what we want in society within the organization. In 2016, uh, we decided to fund Demosisto and participate in elections, trying to monitor the, the governments from the inside and to add a younger and more progressive voice into the council. As young activists, one of our main missions was to magnify the needs of young people and increase their visibility. Society should see every student and young person as a citizen and therefore subject them to the same respect and regard as others. This has been our mission through and through, no matter we are in the streets or in the chambers. Um, Demosisto won a seat in the 2016 Legislative Council elections alongside several other social activists and professionals. When it was a still a pro political party, Demosisto was part of the pro-democracy camp, standing in opposition to the pro beijing camp. So unlike uh, politics in Europe or America, Hong Kong politics is not separated in uh, left and right wing, but rather pro-democracy and pro-Beijing. The pro-democracy camp did well in 2016, brightening the light of democratization. democratization. However, in order to revoke the veto power that the pro-democracy camp gained during these elections, making pro-Beijing decisions more difficult to pass, the government of Beijing and Hong Kong disqualified six pro-democracy lawmakers by forcefully interpreting the basic law. Demosisto has since been in the blacklist, forbidden to uh, participate in any further elections. This is why uh, today Demosisto is no longer a political party seeking to win a seat, but we have renewed our attention on civil society. 
not only did the government stop young people from entering into the council, they also tried to stop us from street actions and protests. Appeals made by the government sent umbrella movement leaders into jail, and there are still more than 20 political prisoners in Hong Kong as a result of this purge. Last August, a few activists, uh, myself included, were sentenced to 13 months of jail for participating in a protest in 2014. It has now become a norm in Hong Kong to be arrested, proud, and even jailed uh, when you participate in the democracy movements. Since being banned from local elections, Demosisto has worked hard to improve our community work, our creative media, and our international connections. Personally, I'm especially implicated with our creative media presence. Looking for a way to break through and connect with the new generation who are no longer using Facebook as their main social media platform. So we're trying different stuff like Instagram, YouTube, or even some very personal uh, apps like um, uh, Snapchat. So we use this platform as a way to uh, send out messages. Uh, when it comes to the international connection, Hong Kong is in a unique position where it is both behind and in front of Europe when it comes to the cycle of democratization. We have never had genuine democracy, but due to the events like disqualifications, we are at a stage where we can no longer depend on the institutions. And we are currently seeking answers to the problem. This is why we worked it hard to connect and exchange with people from different political backgrounds around the world hoping to find inspiration and motivation. The international community has also been very supportive during the imprisonment of young activists last year, including myself, and we were very grateful for that. Apart from Hong Kong's right to a high level of autonomy being threatened, the human rights situation in mainland China has also been worsening. Uh, most notably, Nobel Peace Prize winner Liu Xiaobo died while imprisoned by the Chinese Communist government. The situation in Xinjiang has also evoked much attention lately. The Chinese government adopted extreme city monitoring and used what they called re-education centers to imprison more than one million Uyghurs. I don't know uh, any, if anyone has heard the news. Uh, Chinese government sending troops in every family uh, in Xinjiang to monitoring uh, the Uyghurs. Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan, Tibet, and Xinjiang are all crumbling under the authoritarian rule of Xi Jinping. We hope that the international community could now see that China has become part of the global problem of declining democracy. Using its sharp power, China is exporting its authoritarianism, manipulation, and exploitation tactics. In addition to creating new regional conflicts, the Hong Kong pro-democracy movement is struggling to survive under Beijing's hardline policies. And we need the international community to continue to monitor our situation in order to prevent the spread of totalitarianism, so that young people who are on the front line may know that they are not alone in this fight. So thank you, and I look forward in the conversation part. Yeah. <laughs>